Just last weekend, one of the pro members shared this incredible website featuring some truly impressive animations. As I scrolled through, one effect really caught my attention, this incredible image trail animation. If you look closely, you'll notice that this isn't just a typical cursor trail effect. As soon as you scroll down and your cursor enters this specific section, you can see images start appending dynamically around your cursor even before you move it. Of course, it has the standard behavior of creating a trail as you move your cursor, but it's also tracking the cursor's position relative to this section and triggering the trail even while scrolling. So when you scroll up or down and leave this section, the effect stops, which means there is a lot more happening under the hood. This was too good of a challenge to ignore, so I decided to rebuild this effect using pure JavaScript. I originally considered building this in Next.js, but that would have made the video too long. So to keep things short and simple, I'll show you how to build it using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But for those who are interested, I've also created a Next.js version, which you can access through the Pro membership along with this one. You can find the link in the description. I think this might be one of the most refined and dynamic image trail animations you'll find on YouTube to date. But let me tell you that putting together these projects takes a lot of time and effort. So if you find my work helpful, please drop a like and subscribe. It really helps. All right, let's jump into the code. For the HTML, we need three sections, an intro, a trail container, and an outro. The trail container is where we'll create the actual trail effect. Inside each section, I'll add some placeholder text just to make sure the page doesn't look empty. But you can totally leave it blank. It has nothing to do with the animation itself. Alright, that's all we need for the HTML. Now let's move on to styling. First, we apply a global reset to remove any default margins and paddings while ensuring that all elements follow a consistent box sizing model. Next, for the body, we set a custom font and apply a dark background color to create a clean modern look. For the headings, we make the text white, adjust the font size dynamically using viewport width and set a medium font weight. We also disable text selection to prevent unwanted highlighting when interacting with the page. The paragraphs are styled with uppercase text, a monospaced font and a bold appearance to maintain a sharp structured look. Each section takes up the full width and height of the viewport and is centered using flexbox. This ensures that all the content remains perfectly aligned. We also set overflow hidden to prevent any unwanted scrolling effects. Now for the trail container, we give it a light background color so that the trail effect stands out against it. Finally, we define the styling for the image trail elements. These images are absolutely positioned and set to a fixed size, ensuring they maintain their shape. The object fit property makes sure they retain their aspect ratio. We also add rounded corners for a smooth, refined look. We'll set transform origin to the center and to enhance animation performance, we'll use fill change transform to optimize rendering, ensuring the images move smoothly without causing layout shifts and any lag. With this styling in place, our structure is now ready. Next, let's move on to the JavaScript and bring this effect to life. The first thing we do is import Lenis, a smooth scrolling library. This helps us create a fluid scrolling effect, making the animations feel more polished. Next, we wait for the document to fully load before running our script. Once the page is loaded, we initialize Lenis. This will continuously update the smooth scrolling behavior without us needing to manually refresh it. Now, we grab a reference to the trail container, which is the section where our image trail will appear. We store this inside a variable called container so we can easily manipulate it later. After that, we define a configuration object called config. This contains all the key settings that control how the animation behaves. Image count sets the total number of images that can appear in the trail. In this case, we are allowing up to 35 images at a time. Image lifespan determines how long each image stays on the screen before fading out and being removed. This value is set in milliseconds, meaning the images will disappear after 750 milliseconds. Removal delay controls how frequently old images are removed from the screen. Mouse threshold is an important setting. It defines the minimum distance the cursor must move before a new image is added to the trail. This prevents images from appearing too close together. Scroll threshold works in a similar way, but instead of tracking mouse movement, it tracks scrolling. This ensures that images aren't created too frequently when the user scrolls. Idle cursor interval is another key setting. It determines how often images are added to the trail when the cursor is not moving. This is what allows the effect to continue even if the mouse is still. 
in duration and out duration control how long it takes for the images to fade in and out making the transition smooth finally we have in easing and out easing which define easing functions for the animations after defining the configuration we create an array of image file paths using arrays from method this dynamically generates file names for 35 images so we don't have to manually list them each image follows a naming pattern like image1.jpg image2.jpg and so on Lastly, we set an empty trail array which will store all the images that appear as a part of the effect. This array will help us keep track of the images currently on the screen and remove them when needed. Now that we have our configuration set up and ready, let's move on to handling mouse movement and tracking. First, we define a few variables to store important cursor data. Mouse x and mouse y will keep track of the current mouse position of the mouse on the screen. Last mouse x and last mouse y store the previous position of the mouse. Is moving is a boolean flag that tells us whether the cursor is currently in motion. His cursor in container keeps track of whether the cursor is inside the trail container section. We only want to create the effect while the cursor is inside this area. Last removal time, last steady image time, and last scroll time store timestamps for various events. These are used to control when images are added or removed, preventing excessive animations. A scrolling and scroll ticking are two flags that help us track scrolling behavior, ensuring that images appear smoothly as the user scrolls. Next, we define a function called isInContainer, which takes the x and y coordinates of the mouse as input. This function checks if the cursor is inside the trail container by comparing its position with the container's boundaries. It does this by getting the container's dimensions and ensuring that the cursor's x and y values are within those boundaries. If the cursor is inside the container, the function returns true, otherwise it returns false. This check is crucial because we only want to generate the image trail when the cursor is inside this effect area. Next, we define a function called set initial mouse position. This function is triggered when the user first moves their mouse over the page. It records the initial position of the cursor and stores it in mouse x and mouse y. It also updates last mouse x and last mouse y so we can start comparing movement right away. Then it checks if the cursor is inside the container using the isInContainer function. Finally, after running once, it removes itself as an event listener. This means we only run this function once at the very start ensuring we don't repeatedly reset the cursor's position. Now we need to determine when to create a new image in the trail. For this, we use a function called has moved enough. This function calculates the distance the cursor has traveled since the last recorded position. To do this, we apply the Pythagorean theorem, a mathematical formula used to measure the distance between two points. It takes the difference between the current mouse position and the last recorded position for both the x and y axis. Then it squares these values, adds them together and take the square root of the result. If the calculated distance is greater than our mouse threshold value, the function returns true, meaning the cursor has moved far enough to trigger a new image. Otherwise, it returns false. Now that we have mouse tracking and movement detection set up, the next step is to create and display the trail images when the user moves their cursor. For this, we define a function called create trail image. The first thing this function does is check if the cursor is inside the container. If not, it simply returns without doing anything. Next, we store the current time using the now method. This helps us control when images are added based on movement and idle time. Now, we check two conditions that determine when to create a new image. If the cursor is moving and has traveled far enough based on our mouse threshold, we update last mouse x and last mouse y, then call create image to generate a new trail image. If the cursor is not moving, we check if enough time has passed since the last image was created. This ensures that once the conditions are met, we call the create image function to actually generate and position the image. Now let's create the create image function, which is responsible for creating and styling each trail image dynamically. First, we create a new image element and assign it the class trail image, which we previously defined in the CSS. Next, we select an image from our preloaded list by picking a random index. This ensures that different images appear in trail instead of the same one every time. We also apply a random rotation to the image, giving it a more organic and scattered look rather than a rigid pattern. The rotation value is randomly picked within a range of minus 25 to 25 degrees, making the images appear at different angles. To position the image at the exact cursor location, we need to calculate its coordinates relative to the trail container. We do this by getting the bounding box of the container and subtracting the container's position from the cursor's position to get 
get relative x and y coordinates. Now we apply these coordinates to the image so it appears exactly where the cursor is inside the container. Before adding the image to the page, we set an initial transformation where the image starts at a scale of 0, meaning it's invisible at first. We also apply the random rotation that we generated earlier. Then we apply a transition so that after a small delay, the image smoothly scales up to its full size creating the fade in effect. Finally, we store the image inside the trail array along with its rotation value and the time it should be removed. At this point, we are successfully creating and positioning the images dynamically based on the cursor movement and idle time. Now that we have the cursor based trail effect, the next step is to make sure the trail responds to scrolling and that older images are removed properly to keep the animation smooth. To do this, we define a function called create scroll trail image. This function is responsible for creating new images when the user scrolls, even if the cursor isn't actively moving. Just like before, we first check if the cursor is inside the container. If it's outside, we exit the function to prevent unnecessary animations. Now, instead of placing the image exactly at the cursor's position, we introduce a small random offset in both the x and y directions. This offset ensures that images don't appear in a straight line when scrolling, making the trail look more natural. We do this by adding and subtracting a random amount based on the mouse threshold, ensuring images are scattered rather than perfectly aligned. We then randomly decide whether to move the image left or right, up or down. Once we have the new position, we call create image function to generate and display the trail image. Finally, we update last mouse x and last mouse y to match the cursor's current position, keeping everything in sync. This function ensures that even if the cursor remains still, the trail effect continues dynamically while scrolling. Now let's move on to removing old images using the remove old images function. Since we are continuously adding new images to the screen, it's important to remove older ones at the right time to prevent lag and excessive memory usage. First, we store the current time using the now method. Then we check two conditions. If not enough time has passed since the last removal, we exit the function early to avoid removing images too frequently. If there are no images left in the trail, we simply return since there is nothing to remove. If both conditions are met, we look at the oldest image in the trail. Now we check if the image has existed longer than its lifespan. If so, we proceed with removing it. First, we retrieve the oldest image from the trail array and store it in a variable. We then apply a fade out transition by scaling the image down to zero. This makes the removal effect smooth instead of instantly disappearing. We also update the last removal time so that the future removals stay properly timed. Finally, we wait for the fade out animation to complete before actually removing the image from the DOM. At this point, we have the full cursor trail effect working, including cursor based movement, scroll based movement, and proper cleanup of older images. Now that we have set up an image creation and removal, the next step is to ensure that we properly track the user interactions, both mouse movement and scrolling, so the trail effect responds in real time. First, we listen for the mouse move event, which fires whenever the user moves their cursor anywhere on the page. Inside this event, we update the mouse X and mouse Y with the cursor's current position. Then, we check if the cursor is inside the trail container using our is in container function. If the cursor is inside the container, we set the flag to true, meaning we are actively tracking movement. To ensure that the effect stops smoothly when the cursor stops moving, we introduce a short delay before making the cursor as still. We use a set timeout to reset his moving flag to false 100 milliseconds after the last detected movement. However, if the user moves their cursor again before this timeout ends, we clear the previous timeout and restart the timer. This prevents the effect from stopping abruptly and ensures that small continuous movement feels smooth. Next, we listen for the scroll event, which fires whenever the user scrolls the page. First, we check if the cursor is inside the container. If it is, we mark the flag to true, allowing the trail effect to continue even if the cursor itself is not actively moving. To add slight randomness, we adjust the last mouse X by a small amount in a random direction. 
This ensures that the images don't appear in an unnatural straight line when scrolling. Just like with the mouse movement, we introduce a small delay before stopping the effect when scrolling ends. We use another set timeout to reset the flag 100 milliseconds after the last scroll event. If the user scrolls again before this timeout ends, the timer resets, ensuring a seamless effect without sudden cutoffs. Now that we have set up mouse and scroll tracking, the final step is to smoothly integrate scrolling behavior and continuously update the animation using the animation loop. First, we add another scroll event listener to detect when the user scrolls. We right away store the current timestamp to track when the scroll event happened. Then we set a scrolling flag to true, indicating that the user is actually scrolling. Next, we check if enough time has passed since the last recorded scroll event using scroll threshold. This prevents the script from triggering too often, keeping the effect smooth and optimized. If the threshold condition is not met, we exit early to avoid unnecessary function calls. Next, we introduce a technique called Request Animation Frame Throttling to ensure that the effect only runs when needed. We check if scroll ticking is false, meaning a new animation frame hasn't been requested yet. If so, we request the next available animation frame and create a new trail image only if his scrolling is still true. After running, we reset his scrolling and set scroll tracking to false, allowing future frames to trigger smoothly. Using request animation frame instead of calling functions directly makes scrolling feel smoother, reducing lag and unnecessary calculations. Now we define the main animation loop using a function called animate. Inside this function, we first call create trail image function which checks for the cursor movement and adds new images accordingly. Then we call remove old images to ensure that images don't pile up and cause performance issues. Finally, we call request animation frame on animate itself, creating a recursive loop that continuously updates the effect in the background. To start the animation, we finally call the animate function once, kicking off the infinite loop that keeps the effect running as long as the page is active. At this point, we have successfully built an advanced cursor following effect. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.